I, I, when I come back from Puerto Rico, back to Brazil in 73, um, I was a very different artist from, from the year that I have departed from Brazil, 69. Uh, many different experiences have turned me from uh, an artist that was working into, into, uh, the, into certain parameters, poetical parameters, to a more conceptual frames, uh, conceptual frames in my work. Mm -hmm. That was that was due to several experiences, um, working and living uh, from '69 to '73. Mm -hmm. So I, I can say that when I arrived to Brazil, back to Brazil in '73, uh, my work was taking this uh, conceptual directions mm -hmm. that they didn't have before. Mm -hmm. Uh, when I uh, when I came to Brazil, I settled in São Paulo. That's where where I, I had the place to work at the university. Invited by Walter Zanini, me and Julio Plaza, my my husband, and so we we joined um, a faculty, um, Armando Spenciado, which was. I think as the, the place or somehow uh, could group um, a conceptual group of artists, um, group of conceptual artists, <laughs> and that um, um, at, the same, at that time were, were teaching at this university, where the program was very, had suffered radical transformation by an artist uh, called Donato Ferrari. Um, Walter Zanini from the Museum of Contemporary Art was also a teacher at this university. So we 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 were we reached the right milieu in São Paulo to to develop our our capacities um, and work. So much of this work was uh, was done close to the Museum of Contemporary Art. That uh, was a sort of um, support for many um, radical manifestations at the time. Um, during some years, um, the international connections were done through this museum in, in Brazil. I, I believe in whole Brazil. Mm -hmm. It was a sort of a window for, um, for um, international connections and uh, dealing with um, the conceptual manifestations of all different um, natures, um, including um, including connected to this museum, the, the video art came to to exist in, in Brazil. So I am also one of the one of the forerunners of Brazilian video video art. At that time, we edited many magazines and. Um, and we started to make a sort of net with uh, conceptual artists, not only in Brazil, but around the world. So the scene was, um, was not a scene for the activities um, related to market, art market. There was an art market in Brazil at that time. But um, we could, uh, we could some many ways uh, to develop um, um, group activities and uh, many exchanges in Latin America also with other groups, um, let's say in Argentina, in Mexico, and so on. And also in Spain and France. So the exchanges were, uh, were done in an international basis um, during the whole period of the 70s. So that there were many international connections also with Canada in many exhibitions done in, in, in Brazil and we, uh, we have art, Brazilian artists have participated in, in many manifestations around around with um, by mail art by sending works that were exchanged in many in many ways no? especially by mail art in those mm -hmm. years but um, it was a sort of vast community in the world, you know. Mm -hmm. 
not no intermediation of market of values but of, of uh, formation and we displaced a lot also at the time um, during in my own experience uh, we have we have been in in um, in a meeting in Encuentros de Pamplona, that was a very important meeting celebrating John Cage in 72, I believe. Mm -hmm. And uh, and also other other manifestations, so I was aware of and participating in all that. Groups of artists in Brazil, mainly in Rio de Janeiro, someone in northeast of Brazil, we had somehow exchanging experience. There was, was hard times of dictatorship, but this was our, our way to, to escape from from being too tight. Mail art also allowed that we get to know the, the people for the Europe, mm -hmm. uh, Western Europe, that we didn't know before. Mm -hmm. So that was the first time I could see everybody's work exchanged. exchanged. You think at that time that it, it, even photocopies didn't exist, so we, we sent original, original photos and so publications. It was a kind of a miracle. <laughs> there was no galleries around for special for conceptual artists, mm -hmm. but um, I believe that um, regardless of the many um, bad things that are around about teaching, about universities, about academy. I think in Brazil there's still space for freedom, you know, until now. Freedom of uh, manifest of expression. I think you can, you can fight with each other, but it's like the cards are on the table you now. Um, I think that's is a, where this is permitted. Even so, there was a lot of prosecution inside the universities during the dictatorship. But I'm I very much uh, took during my life this this direction of feeling um, more free to invent and to investigate inside the university. Uh, I found immediately the ways to ask um, grants for research. I find uh, I found a way how artists, not only visual artists but musicians and theater artists, could could present their their, their production as as a solid investigation in the same way as physicians and, I don't know, chemi chemists. So that's a matter of language, of vocabulary. <laughs> and then I could do several, several series of radical, radical work uh, sponsored by, by national um, agencies for research. So if I wasn't only an independent independent artist, I would not have the success, no. Mm -hmm. So I think that many ways, and that lasted many years in my life, um, to be a professor has helped me in this uh, in this situation, how to survive, how to live from my work without being in, in the market. Mm -hmm. Also, there are many other things that are important in that, like uh, in the exchange with several generations, with several types of directions of poetics that has always nurtured my own life and my poetics also. It involves uh, many months, involves international travels to visit, to know the site, to get to know the history of the site, to get to know the conditions, the way people use the spaces, um, so many layers, no, until it gets into your mind what to do at, there. But each one is, is taken as, as a project, you know, as a project where you have a goal and you have to reach to several, several layers of operations and preparations and test, testing. To that Taipei Museum, I went there with three dimensions of three lengths of feet. I took three three feet, one this size, normal size, other this size, and the other one this size. And I placed them on top of the facade and went away to check how, how far could I go to still identify a foot. And finally I selected 
the largest one because it is a very tall museum. But I have to imagine the whole thing by the length of one, one, one foot. So this, this test was needed. And they also went to, they had to paint the museum again because it didn't stick the vinyl. And they want very much to have the pieces, some areas that had to be painted, repainted, freshly repainted with another kind of paint to hold the vinyl. So this, these are technical things, but this, um, this is important. So the, the, the conceptual project is uh, the understanding or the, the proposition, what are you going to propose for that, that uh, environment, that context and that situation. Each, each, each piece com conveys a lot of material. I get enormous layers of papers and notes and every, every detail, you know. So when the final is done, it's, it's like uh, the end of a history, you know. I always like to say that I'm, I'm, I'm not a specialist in technologies, different technologies. That would be impossible. I could not know about uh, the many things I have technicians involved in my work as a specialist. I would be involved too much in, in, in this part and I want to feel myself free to invent something that I can then imagine how could this could be done. I'm very curious about looking at new ways of producing images in contemporary times. This has expanded a lot, you know. So I always can find, wow, I could, I could do something that use this type of devices, this type of, I could have ideas on, around that. And suddenly I have to reach the, the right way to, to find the, how to do it, you know. But um, I think I'm a low-tech artist, you know. Um, I go from the very art artisanal to the more sophisticated uh, technology, always assisted by collaboration, co different collaborations. But um, I have done so many porcelains during my life, painting shadows over it and using the most traditional pff, media. Uh, and I draw a lot, still draw a lot. But um, the motifs are. Uh, uh, other question, the other question. Um, I, since at more than a decade that have been working with the idea of cross stitches, you know, because they, they, they came, they first came with the idea of making sort of a fixed, um, fixed image of the, the sky. I mean, fixed because the, the sky is reflected over the, the glasses are always changing, you know? But I, I love the idea of making this fixed skies. First time um, through a commission of an architect in Brasilia. Brasilia is, has so large skies, you know, around. And I was amazed by the idea of making some skies over the, over the buildings. But they should be very much much codified or manipulated than the real ones, the real skies. That's why I came the idea of using the cross stitches. And then um, I was very much into the idea of uh, type of codification uh, the, the cross stitches permit. Uh, they are very like large, they are like large um, dots, you know, at, in the printing uh, procedures. When you have an image which is low definition, you have you can make it with large dots, so you can hardly see. And there is, so I was exploring this limit when you can identify the image when you cannot. So cross stitches, no matter how small they are, tiny they are, and how big they are, they permit this this sort of uh, this sort of uh, from where you see how far you should go to, to, to identify an image. When I, when I did um, a piece um, called, um, called um, Mundus Admirabilis and uh, Rerum Nature, Rerum Nature was the part that in, in this in Latin uh, says uh, Rerum Nature is things from the nature. 
and um, and did all the, the porcelain with the insects. And I have um, a tablecloth that I have commissioned to to some women, um, women that made this for me in, as a craft in northeast of Brazil. They're very tiny, tiny, tiny cross stitches. They last like two years to make a, to make the cloth. And I and they didn't they didn't do it when it rained. It rains it rains not so much in the northeast, but they stopped. I never understood why they stopped doing. Uh, because this lasted two years, and uh, finally I could have this uh, this precious thing. You know? But then you could see the, the insects that were done digitally, uh, perfectly tra traduced, translated to this uh, to these codes. You no, know? but when I did the the MASP building, for instance, you have seen they are large, large uh, when large um, cross stitches. No? You, when you are very close to the building, you only see the geometry, you see the stitches. But you, when you go far, you can see the, the fixed sky, you know, the sky. So, also in the sidewalk, my recent work, when you go to a building and look at it, you can see the whole thing as a tapestry. But you're walking over, you see geometrical things crossing. I mean, um, my, my, my interest for banal imagery also for common objects of daily life, like the porcelains. I think it's the same attitude that makes me look for cross stitches. Mm -hmm. um, as, uh, as, uh, in a way that I, that I have been using these daily objects to, to, to destabilize them, to somehow make them look strange and new. And so that's uh, the cross stitches. Uh, is uh, very attractive to me because they belong to a secular tradition. Secular tradition, we cannot identify where they were, they, they appeared first time, and when they are secular, secular. And I was very interested to read, reading really the history of prostitutes, that they have um, associated with the um, alphabetization of women in the Middle Ages. So that, that was when they, they were um, making embroideries with the initials lettering on fabrics. So this, this is, I think it's very important. Then there's also the idea of um, wrapping, of protecting, of um, making warm or whatever. No? Mm -hmm. But I would love to make, to, to wrap those, that building, for instance, that totally, maybe in pink. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That I think that uh, I think that photography is also grounding my work, but uh, but the, the digital media has has helped me a lot to control scale, uh, to to expand uh, to other other areas. I think um, it's a different different practice. But I think but I think that more than painting. Printmaking was uh, an area that could receive all this um, type of input from technology, you know, to image producing. Mm -hmm. I think this has always been like that, you know, because art, the art field was always capturing things that um, non-art field uh, for, print made, for print was um, pursuing at that time. So I think, I think that is very much uh, into making that's a matter of imagination so I can I don't need I keep doing prints on paper but I, I can do prints on buildings also yeah. over buildings they, they has assisted me to to make my work um, survive because there's a there's a moment where I was doing the same thing but painted so this uh, as ephemeral ephemeral work. And that I was somehow suffering with that because I could see this was. It took me a lot of uh, physical effort to, to paint enormous things, you know, like uh, like I was in the Middle Ages. So there was a time in the eighties, I was like that. Finally, and I, I I looked for other other types of production that could where I could do the same thing. Maybe that's when I started to do cutouts 
and I did some tapestries also. But finally, the, the idea of having a matrix again as, as in trick making, that we can have a digital matrix and repeat exactly, really exactly, or, or making transformations that are, are pos very possible in, in digital and very easy to do in, in, in digital media. So that has assisted me a lot in, the, in this idea of how to make my work survive. Now I can make um, sort of prints using matrices, and people can can have this like a print. Mm -hmm. They can repeat it as many times as needed. Until the 90s, I was drawing everything. I was building drawings on on paper with grids, and I was using perspective a lot, large perspective so large life size that I have to use cords or strings to the viewpoints. That was, uh, that was like a manieristic operation <laughs> or like a Renaissance operation. But now the, um, it's different, of course, it's slightly different, but that has allowed me to, to go faster and to reach, um, reach the needed scales, you know. You know, a piece like that I pay one, as you have mentioned, was all done there, we sent by mail. This is fantastic. So we don't have to transport heavy pieces. You send um, the information and the, it is done locally. Yeah. And this is something that I have explored since the 90s, when my first my first digital, digital installation was by, bought by the Museum of Fine Arts in Houston. No, I'm sorry, by Austin. Austin. And they bought um, the shadow of Marcel Duchamp Bicycle Wheel. Um, that was when? The end of the, 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 end of the 90s. And um, the first moment, uh, there was lots of, lots of questions about how are we going to keep this? And how can we insure this? There's an insurance for that. How can it transport? And how is it going to be archived? And, and so changed a lot. Just put some, a lot of new questions for the museum collections, no? Yes, I have done many, 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 much, Many of my works in the 70s were called um, Art of Drawing. The Art of Drawing series included videos, included many graphic manifestation books, artist books and so. But um, it was all about orthography, the, the, the hand, the use of the orthographic work. Um, as a professor, I always had a lot of resistance from the traditional printmakers because I used um, photomechanics, uh, included photography in my, in my work and, and taught, has taught the students how to do it. Um, but uh, ironically, I have one of the most explored signs in my productions is my own hand. Yes, it's a, it's a sign that appears along um, appears since along the, the decades, you know. And um, lately I have been doing a research on how many times this hand is on the, is, appears on the work as, as a mark, as a, an autographic mark. But, um, but I have the full conscience that is um, placing myself into, into, into that, that image or that concept of saying about myself. But um, Graphically, it's there, you know. I don't, use, I don't need to use my hand. My, my work could be done for, for any, anybody else see, if I propose this. This is going to be like that, you know. Recently, I have, I have been doing um, a sort of um, participation or illustration, I don't know how to call it, to a very special edition for um, um, South uh, Korean artists called a poet, I'm sorry, called Ko mm -hmm. And I received 12 copies. That's the edition. 
um, made and uh, printed by typography, very special typography. And I had to include um, my collaboration as a visual artist into all these copies, same without printing. They should be by hand. And then I decided to to appropriate images, as I always have done, images of several sources, and made a collage, made them as a transparent collage, printed, and using a light table, many of my assistants came to draw themselves, themselves the copy. So they are the copists. I included them as, as the copists in these editions. And they have copied each one as in, in, in his own way, because drawings are always different, even if you copy them. Mm -hmm. And uh, then I included my hands, black, silhouettes cut in paper, different gestures uh, along the pages. So that illustrates what, what uh, somehow what I think about orthography. I think uh, there is, there are some links, you know, because um, much of my attitude towards the images, towards the real, are, um, are, could be could be interpreted as ways to 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 make them to, to transform them and to how can I produce a strangeness, uh, something that uh, decontextualize. De de uh, it could be radically transform the perception. I think this, this is something. This is something that uh, is analogous to surrealism. I was very much um, influenced by the Kiriko mm -hmm. and um, and others, the Ray and Greta Benheim, all those um, neo Dada artists that have been explored these new veins of surrealism, even Duchamp. I think there's a, there's a clear mark in my work, especially in pieces like the enigmas, where mysterious, enigmatic, paradoxical shadows uh, appear from nowhere, you know. So these connections were already explored between my work and the Kirikos and, and, and Ibele Camargo, my, my, my master in Porto Alegre, the city where I was born. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there was a special exhibition um, trying to find this gen sort of genealogy. Some pieces, especially those that deal with light and shadow as a, as a, as a, as a paradox, uh, Many objects are, have a, this very, very clear surrealistic um, frame. I always, I always make many projects at the same times, at the same time because because I it takes me a lot of time to to invent, a lot of time to 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 go through the ways of doing it and then producing it is something else. So, but uh, there are different uh, lens of of uh, energy given to each project. Um, they might look very different, but um, I just finished this book I told you about, uh, and also have been doing uh, some graffitis, outdoors graffitis, working in collaboration with graffiti people, people in, in Brazil, in preparation of my, my work uh, for the Havana Biennale next, the 12th, I think it's the 12th of Venom, you know. And um, I also have a participation here in, in Toronto to the, to, for the Luminato Festival, where I conceived two pieces, two, com two complementary pieces um, that permit the interaction, several types of interaction with, with the audience for the festival. One is going to be a laser projection around the buildings with the word light written as a calligraphy in almost 70 languages and alphabets. And, and then there is a structure 
built uh, at the place, um, city hall place, uh, where um, people would be under a sort of, could be cross a marquees, a large marquees, um, made of several platforms, where um, the effect of um, reflection of the colors and the word light again written as a, a negative to to make to permit the, the entrance of light. I wish could permit a sort of magical experience of light, the word light like a tautology, you know, and um, and the colors. I don't know. That's an um, an experience, uh, multi layered, multi layered thing. Then, what else? I'm preparing an, an exhibition for a museum in Rio, Rio de Janeiro. I just opened a large exhibition in Museu Oscar Niemeyer, also in Brazil. I'm preparing new prints, regular prints on paper, for, for a group of um, friends of the Museum Castro Maia in Rio. And um, I have to invent a pattern for a um, possible um, piece in Tokyo uh, in next October um, for three two two facade, facades in the wall. And I think that's that. I'm not a sweet artist. I've never been. I think um, there's a lot of. Um, I like to to transform in a way that uh, is not uh, to make it nice or, or um, I think uh, I'm I think irony is a component a strong component um, and has been um, since uh, since my early manifestations in, in graphics and con in, the, in using images I mainly well, I'm, I use a lot of photography, but I never, I never photograph. I appropriate for images, and, uh, and this brings comes together with uh, the separation of changing, changing of um, changing meanings, and uh, somehow um, this is my attitude has been my attitude um, to subvert the meanings, to change the meanings, and to and to produce this kind of. Uh, Experience that um, is like destabilizing to destabilize what is experience and known uh, as, a, as a solid and, and solid experience. And suddenly, you could experiment something different. That's why I like so much to do the, the presentations, um, anonymous presentations and projections in the streets during the night. This is a very anonymous, anonymous public. This anonymity, I like, I, I really appreciate. Mm -hmm. S some some years ago, I, I found a person that said, "Why well, once I once I saw a, a flying superhero around with Avenida Paulista." She was commenting that she didn't know that I did I did it, but that. That remain as a ghost in her imagination. I like to implant some ghosts like that. Um, so also this imagery, night, nightly imagery, like a, a, an UFO, surprising UFO flying around. Why not? So it's like a sort of car cartoon. Sometimes I think I'm making sorts of cartoons in, in the city. And this is, it's another way to make to, to draw over the real real things or to make uh, expanded prints, let's say, you no, know? this is uh, all a gra graphic. I think the, 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 artist, the art function and the artist function is this mediation mm -hmm. with reality. I think it's this sort of magic, magic, magic mediation that, that suddenly twists meaning. Change meanings. I think this. That's. I think that to do this, this sort of uh, uh, interventions, uh, is more close, more close to this experience that uh, reveals the functions of art. So how can transform people without having any art experience of repertoire?